Greetings, everyone. This is I'm Right. I'm Right. And I'm Jill Cox Cordova. I'm Anthony Cordova, and I have no excuses. No excuses for what? I don't worry about it. (laughs) Maybe I should. (laughs) (laughs) You know, when people say don't worry about it, often you actually should. No, no, don't worry about it. What's up, Jill? What's up? What we? What's well, going on? Well, I was going to let the listeners know they they may find this hard to believe, but I have agreed to have you as my my trainer. You know, we tried that before and it didn't work very well. That's because you were like a drill sergeant that was like thinking that I could do what you could do, and that's well. Not see, the case. now it's 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 much better. It's going to be better now for you because since my um illness i lost a lot of muscle mass a lot and um so i don't lift as heavy weights as i used to and i don't have the strength that i used to so now your workout will be lighter because my workout is lighter oh so that that will so it's all about you yeah (laughs) 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 <laughs> yeah, but it, but you benefit because then we can work out together. Okay. So well, you know. we'll, we'll listeners will uh, report from time to time of how that's yeah because I've already started and I'm losing weight and gaining muscle mass, which is good. That is good. Yeah. So now I want to do the same. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, this week's episode. We are talking about financial situations that couples Ooh, find themselves in. Nobody wants to talk about finance. <laughs> they might if they're rich. Maybe. We probably don't want to talk about finance either. <laughs> well, we have put this off for a while, but now it's time to talk about it. It's part of a segment that we call Stand By Your Stance. The segment idea actually came from one of our listeners, Dennis. Hi, Dennis. Hi, Dennis. And Mary. Hi. And Mary. And you know what? All of our listeners know Dennis and Mary. Yes. Now they're they're like part of our hope. They're one of our hosts. Hosts. Yes. Our honorary (laughs) host. So uh, So let's hear what Dennis. Go ahead and play that. Yes. Let's hear what Dennis has to say about finances. All right. Here we go. We. decided when we moved back to Georgia to basically give ourselves an allowance that uh, was no excuses. Uh, Mary has uh, an allowance that goes into her account every month. I have an allowance that goes into mine. And uh, you can do with it whatever you want to, uh, no questions asked. Because there was some friction created earlier about um, – What are you doing with our money? Are you being responsible with it? And, of course, we're aware that uh, money, finances, is a a big point of contention in most marriages. So um, what do you think about that? Are we being too kind of uh, cutthroat to give ourselves allowances? Um, Is it too juvenile? Is uh, um, Is it something you would do? Is it something you would do, sweetheart? Would you give yourself an allowance and put me on an allowance? No. Why? But, Why? but well, the reason is that, you know, everyone is different. Every couple is different. Um, and I, I like that Dennis said, you know, there was some friction created because someone in his household <laughs> was wondering <laughs> where's our money De- going that's right if Dennis was handling the money <laughs> well you know so so i i understand that it it made me chuckle when i when i heard that um but it's a valid question um i know that uh in the past uh, Dennis and Mary have been world travelers and they've sailed all over the world they pilot their own boat all over the world um so and i know that those types of things take a good bit of money sure um 
Uh, so I can see Mary having that question. Hey, you know, what's going on? We're doing all this stuff, but you know, how's the money looking? And I don't know if Dennis said, well, don't worry about it. Cause that's the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you know it so, was Mary that had the question? Maybe it was Dennis who was like, where's all this money going? How do you know it was her? I'm making an, an assumption. Okay. Because I know them both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just making an assumption. Okay. So, but uh, anyway, no matter who asks the question, it's a valid question. And um, to answer Dennis's question, do I think they're being ruthless or selfish, you know, by each one of them having an allowance? He didn't use those words, by the way. Oh, well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and <laughs> so anyway, no, I, I don't think it's ridiculous or anything else for each one of you to have an allowance in, you know, your own account to spend as you wish. Right. Um, because is, that works for them. That works. That works for them. Now, in Jill and my case, things are quite a bit different um, because we actually, before we got married, we discuss finance. And I said, well, you know, Jill, you've had, you know, bills before um, we got married. And, you know, so have I. Um, I said, so how about you? handle your bills and I'll handle, you know, all the other bills for the household and, and everything else, you know, just as a matter of just paying them, you know? Right. And you told me, great, that sounds good. <laughs> that sounds good. So we were both on the same page. Until? I thought we were on the same page. <laughs> I really thought we were on the same page. And... So it we, wasn't that I didn't have get, the money to get, pay my bills. No, you no, that was I had the money. You did have the money. But I noticed that, you know, bills would come in and, you know, I have a routine of kind of paying bills every um Saturday, or whatever, you know. But I always set aside one day a week, same day every day to, you know, to same pay bills. Okay. And so I saw Jill's bills coming in, and I know a week passed, and no bills got opened. And I knew well, another. Who I, likes to get <laughs> bills in the and, mail? Who and, likes that? And another. Nobody <laughs> likes that. And another. And another week passed, and I saw that the bills didn't get opened either. And yes, no one likes to pay bills. I don't like to take bills, but I'm pay bills. But I'm I'm really good at it. Okay, I'm really yes, you're good very at good at it. Money, I'm not. I have the money, but yeah, so I, I had just, the money. I just I discovered, didn't like to open bills. I, I really dis didn't. Yes, I discovered, and so you know, one day I said, you know what the heck with this? Let me let me just open these things up and see what's going on. Oh boy, I was shocked. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I go to Jill. I said, Jill, you know, I I I know you have the money, but there's all these bills that are unpaid. Why? I don't like doing bills. <laughs> so I'm thinking you should have told me that in the first place. We would have had this taken care of. You know, no, no problem. Well, I wasn't trying so, to give you more to do. So that's that's when and, and we people both realized. Might, and, and hearing you you say, it, hearing you tell that story now, it it makes me sound quite juvenile. You know, but. Millennials and younger people today will say, oh, I don't like adulting. And I think that that's I think <laughs> no, no. that was the case for no, me. Listen. I didn't like adulting in that aspect. And I'm not, I've even no. though I could pass math classes, I just I just didn't like to. to yeah, do math. I understand. But I, I, I don't like to pay bills either. But I'm, 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 You're very I'm, good at I'm it. I'm good at it. I'm good at managing money. And, and yes. you know, it's easy to pay bills. And I tell people this all the time. It's even easy to pay bills when you have plenty of money. But when you hit hard times, that's when you really need to know how to manage, you know, the, the money that you do have. Right. Um, so everything gets paid. So um, I'm better at that. And Jill knows it. Now, the other question is now, now that I'm handling the accounts. Um, so I handle her paycheck. I handle my paycheck. We do have separate accounts, um, but yes. I handle both accounts. 
Yes. Um, and, yes. And then there's also money. And we do consider it our money, it, well, yeah, we, even yeah, though because we have we're, separate accounts. We have separate accounts, but we're both signers on, on each, each other's. account. On yes. Right. But, you know, Jill knows that, you know, she'll tell me, hey, I'm going to need, you know, X amount of money this month for such and such. And I say, OK. So I make sure there's money there for her to do what she needs to do. And uh, the question of does Jill um, trust what I'm doing with Absolutely. Our money? I ask you no questions. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Although, I know it's getting done. But, all, but I, I do tell you what's going on. And say, yes, hey, do. I'm doing this. I'm doing that, you know, because of this, because of that. Um, because we want to do something, you know, we want to take a trip later this year. Yes. So, you know. You, I am aware um, of the finances. Putting aside money yes. for that. And so we have that understanding. Um, and right. then, then the other thing, she knows I'm not a person to just go out and buy stuff. I'm not going to go out and just buy a new TV because I wanted a new TV. You know, I'm not going to make these, um, you know, what I would call extravagant um, purchases. I'm not going to go out and buy a car without her knowing. I'm not going to do any of that stuff. Um, you know, anything we consider to be a major purchase. I'm, I'm not going to do that. And then also, I'm not a person that um, needs instant gratification. So if I know that there's something I want to buy that, you know, cost a, a good bit, maybe it's a thousand dollars. I'll wait. I can wait six <laughs> months. I can wait a year. I can wait two years until that thing gets to the price I'm willing to pay. Um, you don't have a weakness in terms of, oh, you see it, you want it. Because when I first met you. I used to buy a lot of little things, but I would buy them from, you know, a thrift store. You know, these are things but, that cost two dollars. But you're also or, the type of person that if there's a really good sale on something. You, you're more inclined to, to buy it just because it's a good sale. For example, well, remember? You, well, well, I know you're going to bring up Las Vegas. No, no, I was going to bring up shoes. Oh, those were for you. I know, but <laughs> I that those was were, one case. And it was Christmas. Mm, okay, but that wasn't on my Christmas list because it wasn't listeners, on your Christmas you list. you may not know this about me, but I absolutely hate shoe shopping. I absolutely hate it. And it's because my foot is small enough to where it's really difficult to find my size and if I do find my size it's difficult to make sure that it looks like a woman's shoe as opposed mm -hmm. to a child's shoe so I really despise shoe shopping but you and I were out together and there during were during Christmas during Christmas doing Christmas during, shopping we were Christmas shopping <laughs> shoes again shoes were not on and my we list we weren't looking for shoes we weren't looking for shoes but we went into this one store it was a high end high end well it was it was a outlet store for a high end store no it was in a mall we were in a mall no we, i remember where we bought Oh, uh, yeah, we it was were. a mall. Yeah, we it was were, a high end we mall. We were in a high end mall. I don't know why we were there because we typically don't shop. In yes, high -end it was malls. a it was a high end mall. Um, you we both saw the shoe Actually, and you I said, do "Remember why we were there?" I don't remember why we were there. I, um, one of your relatives had given me a gift card to one one of the high end uh, stores. Okay, and then I also knew that the high end stores are where we could find shoes in your size well, and that's true that's yes. another reason i don't really like shoe shopping because I, yes you can find them in <laughs> high-end yes. designers so what, um, what about this money well, anyway, that we, i spent yeah so so we saw <laughs> but you were there we saw these pair <laughs> pair of boots and you said try them For on and i'm like and it was 50 percent off but even at 50 percent off it was still a 400 dollars shoe and it i was, was like more than that 
<laughs> well, I mean, the total price after the after it the discount, way, it, it was, was it cost like four hundred dollars. No, they were more than there, that. Well, anyway, I had never <laughs> bought shoes that ex- expensive because I don't really care for shoes, and so I did try them on though. Mm-hmm. And then you did, your and model then I walk. did my, and that's that's how you can gauge if <laughs> if I'm really feeling a shoe is that I'll start walking like a model on a runway. And so beautiful shoes. I still have them. I still bring them out. I still walk that way when I have them on. But you, but I was like, you don't have to get these shoes for me because, and you're like, but it's 50% off. I'm like, of what? A thousand dollars? You know, like, yeah, it was 12. They were $1,200 <laughs> boots. They were 50% off and they the quality was excellent. Yes. This I still have them. They're still, still in have great. The- and they're in, still in style yes, and everything else. Yes. So this is why. So, y- yes, I do have some weaknesses. I am a man that does not want. Uh, well. It's very difficult to find shoes for Jill because she has such a small foot. But I don't believe in getting, you know, cheap, shoes. cheap, cheap shoes. Yes. So I, I don't believe in getting cheap shoes. I don't. I also don't believe in um, Jill buying cheap purses because they don't last. So like, lucky for me, and... right, listeners? <laughs> lucky for me. So, however, if we can afford it, I would spring for high end shoes, especially if they're on sale. Right, right. If we can afford it, but that's one. But at the time, that's one luxury item that I very rarely say to you. Yeah, but I want that shoe or I want that purse. Very rarely. But no, 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 you know, I'm I'm more likely to find shoes or purse for you that's like really expensive. Yes. Um, But, you know, and then I I have one weakness and I I don't know why, because I hardly ever wear suits anymore. (laughs) <laughs> but um, I will not wear a cheap shoot suit. If someone gives me a cheap suit for a gift, I will tell them, please take it back <laughs> because I will never wear this. <laughs> it's true. It's so, true. Well, um, so again, so we do have Jill, our Jill, luxury yes. items that we will. But I don't buy, you know, for. I haven't I haven't bought a sh- suit in years. Right. In, in years and years and years. But, right. you know, one time we were in Vegas and we went into a, a high end store and they had these, you know, really high end suits. And on sports sale. Jackets. They were yeah, on sale. On sale. They're like 50 percent off. And I. It's, I have to get it now because I'll <laughs> never, I'll never find this, you know, at this price. Well, that, and that's any, true. And you else. still have those. They, yes, I still, ha- I still they have look them. Wonderful. So, but, but again, above board. Now, there was one time. Yes, I know where we're going with this. That you know that we, I didn't ask you. Yes, we always agreed that we would, you know, if it was going to be uh, a large purchase, we would, you know, talk to each other about it and, you know, decide whether we could afford to do that or not. But this one time, Jill went into the jewelry store to get her ring cleaned, and she came out with another ring. <laughs> But it was beautiful. <laughs> and the problem was that while you're waiting for your ring to be cleaned, you have time to look around. And <laughs> yeah, and I yeah. was feeling back then, you know, that back then I was the type of person that decided where I was going to live based on the where mall, the mall where is. Where the mall was, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so sometimes I needed shopping therapy. And I don't remember what was going on with me. At that time, but I know it was something work related that oh, I was yeah, feeling was where, very no, it stressed was, out. It was your job. Yes. And I at the time. I was stressed out and just something walking to make around. you feel better. Yes. That's exactly I, what I did. I, I, I but you were you were definitely not happy ooh, with I me. And I haven't happy. done it since. <laughs> I have not done it since. I was not happy at all. Um but Anyway, but that's that's about us. Now let's let's move on to like other couples. So for for us, you know, me handling the money, you know, and and all of that, and discussing what I do and what you need to do with money is is above board, and we're good with it. Um, you know, because we're not really materialistic people, so we live, you know, 
we don't spend a lot of money to live, actually. Right. Um, but then you have other couples. But if you have a couple where both of the partners, both people in the relationship are like spenders and they're like, I have to have it. I have to have it. And it works if they have a lot of money. But it doesn't work. If well, they don't. you know what? It doesn't <laughs> it doesn't even work really if you have a lot of money, in my opinion, because your impulse purchases, things you just buy. Oh, I see it, I want it. Ooh. And you you might buy it and wear it once and or buy it and put it on a shelf. But it, and then you'll be like, I don't know why I bought that. So But again, it's back to shopping therapy. Yeah. So, but anyway, those are things, you know, especially if you have a relationship where both people are just like hemorrhaging money, you know, I want it. I want it. Oh, I, 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 well, me and my friends went to dinner five times this week and each dinner cost $150. And if both people, and then, you know, one person will say, well, if she can do it, I can do it. And they go and do the same thing and it ends up in disaster. I know people that are making, let's say, the same income as you and I. And they go from buying a house, a new house, buying two new cars, buying all new furniture, and then living the life like they're living large. They're, they're buying stuff, all these designer, 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 designer. And then they go bankrupt. Lose everything. They lose their house, lose their cars, lose everything else. Because they both were just spenders. Well, I think a, a lot of that relates to the lack of financial literacy. I think that I, I wish when I was growing up, that, you know, they teach you how to count money in elementary school, right? <laughs> they do? In elementary school, they teach you how to count money. But they should, you know, take that a step further. And once you're old enough to, you know, know how to handle money, teach financial literacy. Our grandson is an amazing saver. I still think he has more money than any of us <laughs> in his savings account. You know, because yeah, yes. he, he, he'll he ask yes. for money, you know, for Christmas or birthday. Uh, he will and not he spend will, it. And he doesn't spend it. And but, when he does spend it, he'll spend it on his mother or, you know, wonderful things like that. Yeah, but the granddaughter, as soon as she gets some money, yes. she spends it. Yes. Gone. But, but so where does that come from? Is that, you know, I, if, I think if that were taught in schools, financial literacy, how to handle your money, mm -hmm. how to bank. You know, his, his other grandmother taught, you know, opened an account for him when he was really, really young. Mm -hmm. And I think that taught him how to handle his money. You know, what a banking, you know, not just checking, but savings, what that is. And um, I'm, I'm not sure why the granddaughter didn't. You know, <laughs> I'm not sure why she didn't she learn the bling, same. Bling. She, she does. Bling, bling, she bling, does. bling, 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 bling. She absolutely does. Um. But I, I think if, if schools taught that at a young age, then we would all have that benefit. Now, not everyone as a, as a teacher, I know not everyone learns well, you know, um, there's always going to be someone who doesn't do it well, no matter what you teach them, yeah. but at least to be exposed to it. I never was exposed to that, hmm. you know? Well, for me, um, my parents uh you know they were middle class you know we're talking middle class in the 60s um which is not much money they might have been lower middle class i i don't know but my parents also were very frugal um they knew their limitations with the money they had um my mother my parents wouldn't spoil us some people may believe that my parents gave uh, me and my siblings everything um and it may have seemed that way on the surface um you know because we had a swimming pool when nobody else in the neighborhood had a swimming pool but it was an above ground swimming pool and 
somebody gave it to us. You know, so it wasn't like they went out and spent a lot of money. So there was a, a, a lot of things like that, that um, maybe my father, my father had like a change jar <laughs> and he would put change in it and then he would use it for Christmas money. And as some of the older people will remember, they used to have what they call a Christmas savings account and it was strictly for Christmas. for Christmas, yeah. So money would be put into your account automatically every week um, for Christmas. So those lessons I learned. So I'm I'm a good saver. If we have money, you know, yes. I, I make sure I save money every week, great, um, like that. So okay, but, but it's all up to the people who they are, what works for them. That's absolutely right. So let's get to our second segment that we call "Give It a Rest and a Resolution." Your conclusion, resolution? My conclusion is that um, in a relationship, for a relationship to work well, finances are very important. And you must try to do your best to uh, get on the same page with your partner on that. And if you're unable to do that, um, then you might need to hire a um, financial planner or a financial expert that can help you. Um, come to some terms on your spending and how you manage your money. That's good. That's good. Uh, for me, um, I never answered Dennis' question of about an allowance. As a child, I had an allowance, um, but I didn't learn to only spend my allowance. I spent everybody else's money, too. <laughs> um, so I know that allowance now for me probably wouldn't work, you know, although I do ask you sometimes, well, what's my budget for the, you know, hey, we need to buy a gift for so-and-so. What's the budget? Yeah. And I will stay within the budget. Yeah. And we're good. And yes. Yes. So my conclusion is that, yes, um, treat, if you're a part of a couple, treat your financial situation the same as you would any other compromise, you know, or see who's good at what yeah. and, and go with that. But respect it. Yeah. You have respect to respect it. it. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get to our third segment that we call. I'm trying to help you. Advice? Hmm. Um, you go first on this one again. It'll lead me into something. Okay. Uh, well, my advice is to do what you and I did when we were dating. Um, and that's discuss our finances. But unlike what I agreed to um, in the beginning, be honest about what your strengths and weaknesses are when it comes to finances. Um, because I'm sure if I had told you straight up, you know, I really, I just don't even like to open my, my bills. I really don't. <laughs> we know that. Too. Maybe, maybe, we know, we, we but if I that. had told you that straight uh, up, I, I, I think the reason <laughs> I didn't tell you is because I wasn't sure how you would respond to that. You know? Well, um, well, no good. Cause I, I do have something to, to add on to that. So, in the beginning of a relationship, before you decide to commit, and I know this is going to sound really harsh, but um, it is wise to maybe look at that person's finances if you're thinking about getting married and what kind of shape they're in. Yes. Because I did share that with you. Yes. But you, but you may find out that, and I know this is going to sound harsh, but that person that you're in love with that you want to marry is like a liability. I mean, like a big <laughs> liability. Like you could be going on through your life. Everything is fine. And then you get married and then all of a sudden you lose everything because of the other person, because of the other finances. person. So it is, it is very important to, to look at those things yes, before you because uh, we, go we, into a committed We did have that conversation. I shared all my finances with you. In fact, you said, you need to make X amount of money more, more money than what yes. you're making. And I did that. And you did that. And we was able to pay off all your debt and, and all yeah. that. So it, it, it worked. So. Yes. All right. Well, let's get to our last segment that we call. So what, what do, do you think? think? What, what do, do you think? think? Because I'm right. Because I'm right. Phone number? Phone number is 404-594-2247. And please, you know, let us know. To, you know, let's talk some more about this subject. Because yes. 
all of us try to stay away from this. Subject. Yes, it's not something I like to talk about, but I don't even like to talk about math. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> all right. So you've been listening to I'm Right. I'm Right. I'm Jill Cox Cordova. I'm Anthony Cordova. Shout out to Gifford Ivan Cordova III for the music. Nick Zinke for the art. And to you listeners. Thank you. All right. We love you all. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.